In July 2021, Portugal was among the top 10 most attractive countries for foreign investments, according to the EY Attractiveness Survey, and this is already showing. Right below the capital sits one of the busiest ports in southern Europe, the port of Sinj. This deep-water seaport sits in a prestigious location right in the middle of all the major sea routes connecting Europe to the world. This southwest tip of Europe is the first point of contact for most of the trades coming from South America, Africa and even North America, and investors are all aware of this. Here is a graph that shows the capital investment in the country in the last month. Portugal used to dominate the world sea trade, with territories in all five continents and business with the most prominent and richest faraway lands and kingdoms. But this glorious empire has all come down partially due to the Lisbon earthquake, and together with the Spanish Iberian brothers, the two world powers are now simply sleeping giants. But this might change in the future. Portuguese people are focused on going back to the sea and investments are flocking into the country. The Portuguese government has even applied for an extension of their continental shelf in order to have access to the vast natural resources of the seabed, on the seafloor and the fish above it, but more on that in a later video. Instead, we are going to be focusing on the massive projects going on at Sinus Port, right below Lisbon, where recent news have shown that the biggest foreign investment in decades is bound to happen. A $3.5 billion mega data center is to be built on this port, which could be the biggest capital investment since the arrival of Auto Europa, one of the most modern car plants in Europe owned by the Volkswagen Group. The company, Start Campus, is about to elevate Portugal to the status of key player in the data market. This will be one of the first mega data centers in the Iberian Peninsula to respond to the growing demand from large international companies in streaming service technology, data processing and storage, social networking companies and business applications. The center will combine the needs of the new information age and digital transition with SIN's unique geographical position, contributing to Portugal's energy transition as well. Five buildings will be built with the useful capacity to supply 450 megawatts of energy to the servers, which will be located on land adjacent to the recently closed SIN's coal thermoelectric power plant. You might not be aware, but Portugal is making a massive push for green technology and is way ahead of the European average when it comes to green energy production. They even advanced their plan to have 80% of renewable energy from 2030 to as soon as 2026. In addition to its geographic position, SINs has five major advantages that make it unique and with the potential to become one of the leading data center campuses in Europe. It has low-cost energy from renewable sources, including solar, wind and future hydrogen projects, scalability, with available land and with significant expansion potential for future growth projects, cooling, with access to existing water cooling solutions to use ocean water to keep the service at their optimal temperatures and potential reuse of waste heat for neighboring industrial customers, unique marine topography, with the existing continental shelf in scenes, which also makes it an excellent location for mooring new submarine cables safely and at a low cost, and connectivity. Through the intercontinental submarine cables currently under construction and excellent connectivity with the interior of the European continent. These intercontinental cables are the supply that the data center will thrive on. Some of the major companies that plan to connect with it are Google, with its Equiano subsea cable between Portugal and South Africa, with branching units along the way that can be used to extend connectivity to additional African countries, Facebook, with its cable all around the African continent to improve the internet access across the region, and Ellalink, a unique low-latency transatlantic route that serves the growing needs of the Latin America and European markets. This network directly connects Brazil's major hubs of São Paulo, Rio de Janeiro and Fortaleza with Lisbon, Madrid and Marseille. Portuguese giants Galp also have major plans for the deep water ports and want to make it its green hub. They will build the desulfurization unit in Sins by 2025 and the 100 megawatt hydrogen production plant in 2023. And they are not alone. Repsol has just invested 657 million euros for the construction of two new factories, one of polypropylene and the other one of linear polyethylene for 2025, with more investments planned for the future including pipelines, solar panel power plants, massive tech deposits and energy connections. This electrolyzer project will focus on its refinery there, 
with the target to replace the existing 600 megawatts of grey hydrogen production with green hydrogen and with the possibility of converting the renewable hydrogen to ammonia, synthetic fuel and further industrial applications. This would significantly reduce the emissions by 2030. And both Repsol and EDP, the Portuguese energy giants, also have plans to build green hydrogen facilities. Not only that, but with the Russian invasion of Ukraine and the natural gas crisis in Europe, EDP is also working with the United States to bring a pipeline directly from the US to the peninsula and are ready to double their capacity for natural gas deposits. Other interesting projects that are planned for the megaports are for example a pilot project for a plastic recycling facility in order to turn plastic to crude, a unique project to produce seaweed in the open sea for distribution and commercialization in a pharmaceutical industry, human food, biofuels and plastics, $80 million invested in a salmon and cod sea farming complex from a Norwegian group, $13 million from a water supply and management company called ADSA, and the Portuguese CHEM is planning on investing $5.2 million in a green hydrogen project of its own. These are only a few of the diverse projects this complex is attracting, and none of these are of course followed by an impressive expansion of the pier and the resizing and modernization of the terminal projecting an increase in the annual handling capacity from 2.3 million to 4.1 million TU, going from 19.5 million invested for the first expansion phase up to 85 million for the third phase. The Minister of Agriculture, Livestock and Supply of Brazil has already visited the port in order to promote the cooperation between the Brazilian and the Portuguese governments for the creation of a new European agribusiness hub. The use of a multi-purpose container terminal in the south of the continent allows, on one hand, transshipment operations to North Africa, the Mediterranean and Atlantic Europe itself. This visit was then followed by representatives of the port of Huelva in Spain, Panama in Central America and Iran ambassadors from the Middle East. In response to policy and market pressures, the private operators of Portugal's two coal-fired power plants announced in 2020 that both plants will permanently close in 2021. The 1.3 gigawatt since coal-fired power plant closed in January 2021 and the 0.6 gigawatt Pego coal power plant that closed in November of 2021 as well. This push for investments and green solutions has made the Zona Industrial e Logistica de Sins, ZILS for short, being flocked by companies. This made the area already 72% full by the end of 2021, with 2,375 hectares. Since is no longer a white elephant, the investment is paying off. In my opinion, the next thing to do will be to connect all the capitals and major cities in Europe and ports with high-speed trains in order to significantly increase the efficiency of transport and travel. And believe it or not, there are already plans to do so. Please leave a comment if you'd like to see what the EU is planning ahead and don't forget to leave a like as it really helps the channel. Thank you so much for watching until the end, consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Obrigado!